Continuous Delivery Code provides an alternative to the standard CDA graphical user interface to manage the application deployment configuration. In this video, we will demonstrate how to use it in a continuous integration scenario to model and create CDA applications. First, we will model an application in a development environment by creating a Groovy script. Then, we will push the script to a GitLab repository, which will trigger a Jenkins build. As a result, all the objects defined in the script will be created in the specified CDA instance. This demo focuses on using CD code and does not provide details on how to set up the tool chain integration. To start using CD code, you need to download the corresponding artifact from the Atomic Marketplace. The artifact is a Java library, which must be added to a Groovy project in your development environment. Once this is done, you can start modeling the CDA objects. This example shows how to use the Groovy syntax. To create a CDA application, you need to specify at least its mandatory attributes. The same applies to other CDA objects defined in the script. The demo script shown will create three components and an application workflow containing three component workflows. For ease of use, you can skip the definition of the folder and owner for the objects under the application. Their values will be automatically inherited from the ones defined in the application. If you want to use a different folder or owner, you must specify them explicitly. All properties defined in the custom type and assigned to an object are created automatically for you in CDA. You do not need to specify them in your script. You can create a new dynamic property or specify a value for an existing custom or dynamic property using the following syntax. Next, let's take a look at how to define the component workflows. You can either create empty component workflows or reuse an existing component workflow definition. To create an empty component workflow, you must define the component, the previous, and the following component workflows, and the application workflow to which it belongs. To reuse a component workflow with its sequence of actions, first you must export the existing component workflow using the Automation Engine Helper class. In this case, we will export the component workflows contained in the Deploy Application workflow of the demo app. As a result, a folder containing the component workflow definitions in JSON format will be created. This component workflow JSON must be referenced by the component workflow definition attribute. To modify the properties of the exported component workflow, you can parse the JSON file and specify new values. This is an example of how this can be done for the upload property. We will change its value in the newly created component workflow, from no, to yes. Once your script is prepared, you can build the application. To connect to the CDA instance where this application will be created, you must set the CDA server and user credentials as environment variables in the build process, either in your development environment, or in the build tool of your choice. The application, and all its related objects, are built at once. If the build process of an object within the application fails, the whole application build will fail too and no objects will be created in CDA. In this demo, we will push the script to a GitLab repository, which is integrated with Jenkins, and the application will be built automatically. You can also execute the script directly from the development environment. When the application build is complete, you can see the results in the execution output. The created application is now available in CDA. When we open it, we can see the components, the application workflow, and the component workflows. The first component workflow is created empty, and the following two component workflows are created based on the JSON definitions. 
You can also see the updated value of the upload property. An application can be deleted by specifying the following flag in the script, and setting it to true. Once you trigger the deletion process, the application and all its related objects are deleted. In case the application cannot be deleted, the application will be renamed by adding a timestamp to the name, and then archived. CD code version 100 covers a limited set of CDA entities. Stay tuned for the next release, which aims to cover the full CDA domain model.